I now give the floor to His Excellency Song Kim, Chair of the Delegation of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Distinguished Delegates, let me begin by congratulating you, Mr. Chaba Korosi, on your election as the President of the 77th Session of the United Nations General Assembly. I am confident that this session under your able stewardship will be crowned with a success. I also expect that the current debate will serve as a meaningful occasion for all UN member states to find a common solution through exchanges of useful experiences to tidying over the existing challenges and crises and building a sustainable world for ourselves, as well as the future of coming generations. Mr. President, over the last three years since the outbreak of the once-in-a-century pandemic, this malignant virus has taken the precious lives of more than 6.53 million people, and it still poses a threat to the existence of humankind with the emergence of sub-variants, strong in transmission and immunity evasion. To make matters worse, the global health crisis is compounded by newly emerging infectious diseases such as monkeypox. This year has seen immense human and material losses in all regions of the world, including South Asia, Western Europe, and North America, due to the destructive effects of the disaster-prone abnormal weather resulting from the climate change. This has created yet another difficult problem to the international community. Moreover, the global security environment is plunging into the worst ever state since the World War II, owing to the high-handedness and arbitrariness of some countries, attempting to replace the current international order centered on the UN system with a rules-based international order governed by the unilateral and exclusive Western values. The UN was founded in reflection of the expectations and desire of humankind who wanted to see no more repetition of the scourge of the world wars that inflicted indescribable misfortune upon them. The present reality urgently calls for the United Nations to promote more than ever before cooperation and reconciliation and unity and solidarity among its member states and discharge its righteous mandate and role. Mr. President, the world was faced with the challenges and difficulties of all sorts during the last year. The DPRK was no exception. This notwithstanding, the DPRK has scored valuable successes in protecting the life and safety of the people from the threat of a malignant pandemic and achieving overall development of the country while persistently overcoming the difficulties and obstacles on its own. I hope that the successes and experiences gained by the DPRK will make a positive contribution to the deliberation of the theme before the current session of the General Assembly for overcoming interlocking challenges and finding transformative solutions by the international community. The unprecedented crisis caused by the malignant virus spread throughout the state from late last April. It presented a very critical ordeal and served as an occasion to test the national crisis preparedness capacity of the country. But the DPRK government made a correct analysis of the features of the malignant virus and the circumstances of its outbreak together with the state of the public health of the country. On this basis, it lost no time in putting forward an anti-epidemic policy in a scientific, transparent, and speed manner so as to take a strategic initiative in preventing the infectious disease and proceeded with its implementation with due care, thus achieving a decisive victory in exterminating the malignant virus in a very short period of 100 days. High sense of organization and voluntary unity of action 
and the social ethos of the helping and caring about each other are the superiority of the political system peculiar to our country. This served as a fundamental guarantee for successful implementation of the scientific anti-epidemic policy. In terms of anti-epidemic and public health foundations, our country has been a weaker condition than other countries. But it took the infectious disease under control at the shortest period of time. All in all, this is a brilliant result brought by the DPRK government's correct anti-epidemic policy and the superior socialist system. The DPRK government is closely following the anti-epidemic situation of the neighboring countries and the world. At the same time, it is stepping up its work to build the national anti-epidemic capacity to actively cooperate within a public health crisis in the present and future and to fully secure the life and safety of the people. Upon authorization, I take this opportunity to express a thanks to those countries and international organizations that have shown their deep interest and willingness to render assistance to the anti-epidemic work of our country. Despite the inevitable difficulties and obstacles caused by the global health crisis and abnormal weather conditions, the DPRK government achieved new successes and progress by propelling without interruption the efforts for national development and stabilization and improvement of the people's livelihood. Industry, agriculture and all other sectors of the economy are showing the trend of a steady and stable growth, and the works to supply the people with modern apartments free of charge and provide the children and pupils all across the country with nutritious food, new school uniforms and stationary materials at the state's expense are being carried forward as planned. Subjective and objective conditions and environment are still unfavorable, but visible and substantial progress and advances are being made in our country with a social atmosphere which is full of vim and vigor. This reality of our country substantiates the fact that we can successfully overcome any difficulty and challenge if we rely on the strength of the people to implement the policies that suit the reality on the ground. Mr. President, the successes achieved by the DPRK in its national and social development are not something which was by no means made under peaceful and tranquil environment. The security environment of the Korean Peninsula is now caught in a vicious cycle of tensions and confrontation due to the growing hostility of the United States and its following forces against the DPRK. Recently, it is heading into a much more dangerous phase. One of the Trump executions of the United States and its servile forces to justify their hostile policy and military threats against the DPRK is none other than the position of our self-defensive nuclear weapons. A few days ago, the US President, just at this place, accused us, saying despite their efforts to begin serious and sustained diplomacy, the DPRK continues to blatantly violate UN sanctions. To put it clearly, we have never recognized such resolutions of the United Nations that impose pressure because we do not abide by the rules made by the United States unilaterally. We will not accept them in the future too. In addition to our country, there exist a number of countries in the world which possess nuclear weapons, but only the DPRK has been subjected to the most brigandish and brutal sanctions resolutions. This is because the United Nations connived at and allowed the high-handedness and arbitrariness of the United States, antagonizing the independent DPRK with an absurd reason that it defaults it in its ideals and systems and opposes its unjust policy. The United States is now planning, even at this moment, to conduct military joint military exercises which arouse serious concerns in the surroundings of the Korean Peninsula. Obviously, this is an extremely dangerous of act of igniting the fuse to drive the situation on the Korean Peninsula to the brink of war. Mr. President, the DPRK has found another correct answer to defending its sovereignty and fundamental interests from the persistent hostile policy and military threats of the United States and its following forces 
and to ensuring peace and security on the Korean Peninsula and in the region. At the recent 7th session of the 14th Supreme People's Assembly of the DPRK, law on the policy of the nation's nuclear forces has been adopted with the unanimous approval in reflection of the general will of the old Korean people. In direction proportion to the increase of the hostile policy and military blackmail by the United States against us, our strength is bound to grow continuously to contain them. The United States compelled the DPRK to adopt a law on the policy of nuclear forces in defiance of the U.S. hostile hostility. The United States should clearly understand that its heinous hostile policy against the DPRK over the past 30 years had just brought about the today's reality and ask and answer itself and ponder over how far it would prolong this situation in the future. Mr. President, in his policy speech given at the 7th session of the 14th Supreme People's Assembly, Comrade Kim Jong-un, President of the State Affairs of the DPRK, said that present international situation shows that the contradictions between justice and injustice and between the progressive and the reactionary, especially the power structure surrounding the Korean Peninsula, have become obvious and the change from a unipolar world advocated by the United States into a multipolar world is being accelerated significantly. Today the world is faced with not a few severe crises and challenges, but the most fundamental danger is the high-handedness and arbitrariness of the United States and its followers that are destroying the foundation of the international peace and stability in order to maintain the hegemonic unipolar world. The rules-based international order advocated by the United States is no less than the U.S.-centered international order permeated with the unilateral and hegemonic American values. It is also an imperialistic power structure which gives a precedence to the interests of the United States, of the common interests of humankind and international law, and forces other countries' obedience. The United States, while dividing the world into democracy and authoritarianism, is now forcing other countries to choose between the two and seek block confrontation and it attempts to maintain world hegemony by expanding the bilateral and multilateral military alliance, a legacy of the Cold War. The prevailing reality urgently calls on the United, States, United Nations mandated to maintain international peace and security and safeguard international justice to fully discharge its missions and role enshrined in the Charter, strictly adhering to the principles of impartiality and objectivity. The United Nations is the most universal international organization, bringing together all the sovereign countries. As such, an individual country or minority group can never represent the UN. All UN activities should be duly oriented to realizing the common interests and prosperity of the member states. To this end, the basic formula for solution of the problems should be the decision-making which reflects not the individual interests of a few countries, but the legitimate and just demand and opinions of all the member states. The UN Security Council is the very organization where impartiality and objectivity are not ensured in the UN activities. The mere fact that the UN Security Council makes an issue of the exercise of the legitimate right to self-defense of a sovereign state is a contradictory act as it denies the basic spirit of the UN Charter which clearly stipulates sovereign equality and non-interference as well as the recognized rules governing international relations. The UN Security Council is not fully discharging its mandate and responsibility to safeguard international peace and security. The main reason exactly lies in the unjust and double-dealing acts of the United States and some UN member states following in the footsteps of the United States. The UN Security Council does not say even a single word about the high-handedness and arbitrariness, reckless sums build-up and war crimes of the United States, but only accuses DPRK of its righteous efforts to bolster national defense capabilities on a case-by-case -case basis. 
All of these show that UN Security Council has lost its competence and authority to act on behalf of the UN member states when it performs its duty to maintain international peace and security. As long as the double standards and unfairness and high-handedness and arbitrariness of the United States are not removed, any decisions or resolutions adopted by the UN Security Council can neither have reasonable binding force nor contribute to ensuring global peace and security. In order to put an end to the high-handedness and arbitrariness of specific countries, including the United States, and restore confidence of the international community in the UN Security Council, Urgent priority should be given to the expansion and strengthening of representation of developing countries, which account for the absolute majority of the UN membership. If the UN is to ensure impartiality and objectivity in its activities, it should stick to the cardinal principles of respecting sovereign equality and the right to self-determination of the peoples. The United States and some other UN member states are trying to unilaterally impose on sovereign states the Western values and the rules-based international order under the signposts of safeguarding democracy and protecting human rights. Such interventionist attempts constitute a flagrant breach of the UN Charter, which gives precedence to the principle of sovereign equality. The impartial acts and double standards favoring the un fair positions of some individual countries and specific forces should be thoroughly eliminated and the core principles of the UN Charter of a sovereign equality and equal rights and self-determination of the peoples should be strictly observed. The DPRK delegation takes this opportunity to extend the firm support and solidarity to the government and people of Cuba in their struggle to safeguard their sovereignty and the right development of the country in the face of the high-handedness and arbitrariness of the United States in a move to interfere in its internal affairs. We also strongly demand the economic and financial embargo on Cuba by the United States be lifted in its entirety immediately as required by the relevant resolution of the UN General Assembly. We also stand in firm support and solidarity with the peoples of the Syrian Arab Republic, Palestine and other independent countries who are struggling to repel interference of foreign forces and safeguard the independence, sovereignty and territorial integrity. Mr. President, it is the inevitable, invariable foreign policy stand of the DPRK government to maintain independence, peace, and friendship. The DPRK will broadly cooperate with all countries and nations which oppose and reject aggression and interference, domination, subordination, and aspire after independence and justice, transcending differences in an ideology and system. It will also develop multifaceted exchanges and cooperation, even with the capitalist countries that respect our country on friendly terms. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea sets great store by sovereign equality and international justice. It will in the future too actively join the international community in its efforts to maintain world peace and security and establish a fair and just international order. It will also fully undertake its responsibility and role in ensuring peace and security on the Korean Peninsula. Thank you. I thank the chair of the delegation of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. I now give the floor to Her Excellency Aksultan Ataeva, 